Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about The Indian Burying Ground by Philip Freneau. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this poem by Philip Freneau, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So, The Indian Burying Ground by Philip Freneau is a very interesting poem. Um, it really compares and contrasts uh, the beliefs between uh, uh, European settlers uh, and native beliefs, um, indigenous beliefs in America. Um, you know, coming from the Christian perspective, uh, and, and this is the essential meaning, the essential understanding of this poem, uh, coming from America, uh, the, the European settlers, um, most likely Christians, uh, believe in this eternal slumber. You know, when the, the, you know, one of the essential beliefs in, in Christian, um, you know, uh, Christian scripture is that, uh, you know, when you die, uh, you do go to sleep. You know, there's, 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 there's enough evidence within the Bible to suggest that uh, when someone dies, uh, you go to sleep for a time or there's an internal sleep. Uh, in this poem, uh, what Philip Freneau presents here from the Indian burial ground is that death is not going to sleep uh, from the indigenous perspective in America. So the indigenous people that have lived in America, uh, the Indians, they believe that, uh, that the afterlife is vibrant. So throughout this poem, the essential meaning is that uh, when Indians die, when, when, to their belief, when you die, uh, you get reunited with your loved ones, uh, with family members that you've lost, with people that you have lost. Uh, the poem really lays this out. Uh, that the the afterlife, the, the life of the soul is very active. Um, you're reunited with loved ones. You're reunited with people that you've lost in the past. Um, all types of people that you may may have loved or been with. Uh, you're reunited with all of them. Uh, and there's 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 hunting. There's uh, there's activity. Uh, there's there, it's vibrant. It's it's lively. Uh, it's a continuation of life. Uh, now, it just suggests, yes, the body has died, the time on the earth has died, but for the Indians, uh, the afterlife is quite vibrant. So this, this poem is, is, in a way, a warning to uh, the reader of the poem and also uh, the, the Europeans, because it's also saying here that we need to respect these Indian burial grounds uh, because um, uh, these are not you know places where dead bodies lay. These, these are places where the souls of these indigenous people still exist. They're still moving around. Um, within the poem, he even suggests a rock that they sit on, uh, that they, they move around on. Uh, he, he points out the landscape of this burial ground, that the, the souls of these people are, are all around. They're moving about, they're playing, they're eating, they're hunting. Uh, they're having a great, end, great old time. Um, so really the speaker here of this poem questions the idea of Europeans uh, the beliefs of Europeans, it, it, he does not, he does not accept the idea that, you know, you die and, and you go to sleep or, uh, or the Christian principles of death and, and what happens to you after you die. He presents the, the indigenous viewpoint and that the indigenous viewpoint here really relies upon, um, you know, connections uh, between the, the, when the people were alive uh, and that they continue these traditions, these customs, they continue them within the afterlife, you know, children play, adults rejoicing and, and reconnecting with, with past loved ones. Um, and at the end of the poem, he, he really concludes with this idea that with, in the burial ground, uh, in this cemetery, in this place of rest, uh, you know, um, even reason and logic uh, can be um, you know, pushed aside. Uh, because there's some things you can see, there's some things that can be moved around uh, that can, can question uh, your reasoning. Um, so this poem really relies upon uh, beliefs about the spiritual world. It's really not a scientific argument or a logical argument. It's mostly an argument relying upon tradition. And, and that's the deeper meaning, if we're going to the deeper meaning and analysis of this poem, is that within this poem, it has a lot to do with uh, the, the soul, the spirit, the afterlife, what happens in the afterlife. Um, and, and of course, uh, you know, the speaker here, the speaker relies upon tradition. The speaker relies upon uh, what indigenous people believe. 
uh, their afterlife stories. And also, uh, you know, in the cemetery uh, that, you know, there, there could be some things you can see, some things you can feel, something you can experience uh, that defy uh, reason and logic. Um, and so there's several things. Just to recap here, what is this poem addressing? It's addressing the, the, the mysticalness of the Indian burial ground, uh, how special it is, the continuation of life for, for indigenous people after they die, um, how important it is to respect the Indian, Indian burial ground because uh, he believes that these souls are still existing, are still moving around about on the land, uh, that they're not slumbering in the ground, they're, they're actually moving in a plane that we cannot see them or touch them or experience them, but they're still moving around to respect their burial site uh, and, and to let them move around in peace and to also understand that, um, well, they don't, they don't, you know, he does not submit to the European belief of the afterlife and what happens to people in the afterlife that, that, that Europeans, the European settlers believed in. So that's the Indian Berga. And this poem is, again, very uh, mysterious, very spiritual, uh, very, um, I guess we can say it's, it's, it's somewhat argumentative. It presents two different beliefs about what happens to you when you die. And, 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 and it contrasts the differences of the European perspective, the Christian perspective of slumber. Uh, um, and, and because, you know, Christians believe that you, that you, you sleep until judgment comes, that there's a period of slumber before judgment. Um, but the, the indigenous people believe that these souls are just moving around about uh, in the afterlife. Uh, and so there, there is a lot to believe within there. There's a lot to take in within there. But, but essentially, that is the poem here. The poem uh, is about what happens to you, uh, um, you know, when you die, when the indigenous people die, uh, and, and what the, the, the writer, the narrator believes uh, they do after they're dead. Um, so that, that's pretty much the poem. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.